This is a vector drawing exercise where we'll be looking at how to draw up the vectors that you can see here. We'll mostly be working with the polyline tool and look at how we can transform the shape of our vectors using the powerful node editing mode. Ultimately, we will be creating vectors that we'll be able to take further and model the banner using the two rail sweep function. So let's go and close this down. So let's go and create a new file. So in here I'm going to put in a width value of 18 inches and the height is going to be 6. We'll set our Z0 to be on top of the material. We'll set our material thickness to be 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to put my XY position in the centre of the part and then I can press OK. In this example we're going to draw our vectors using the draw polyline tool. So I'm going to go in there and you can see I can enter some points if I wanted to. So I'm going to make my first point at x0 and y0. And if I press add, we can see that that's added that in place. Now I can go ahead and sketch in the rest of the shape, or I could just enter more values into the form. But for this example, I'm just going to roughly sketch those in. So I'm just going to click in place there and add a point click there to add a point and click somewhere here and then here okay, and then to come out of there I could just press close and we've got our first vector there and now I want to look at making this a smooth vector so I'm going to go and select that and we're going to come over into the node editing mode or I could press N on the keyboard to access that and what I'd like to do is just select all of these nodes. Uh, so what I can do is just draw a rectangle uh, to select all of those. And we can see that they're all highlighted now. And then if I press S on the keyboard, that's the shortcut key to smooth a node, uh, we can see now that that's added handles to make each of these a Bezier curve. And the blue nodes tell us that it's smooth. And the handles will move in tangent through these points. So when I move one, uh, you can see that the other one will remain in line with the handle that I'm moving. So if we take a look at this area here, what I want to do is make sure that my vector comes in uh, horizontally at the centre point here. So when we ultimately mirror the component that we create from these vectors, we don't see a discontinuity. So I'm going to select this node and then I'm going to hold down shift and select this node also and I'm going to press Y on the keyboard and that's going to align those points uh, in Y. Okay. And then what I'd like to do here is uh, grab this handle and bring that down uh, just so that's not bowing up at the end here. And then what we do now is we just work through each of these, just moving them, positioning them until we're happy with the way that the overall vector looks. Okay, so I'm just going to move this one up. If I wanted to, I could insert another point. So I'm just going to uh, right mouse click and say insert a point, or I could just press I on the keyboard to do that. And I'm just going to spin that round. Might want to bring this down a little. So it's just spending a couple of minutes uh, just pulling on the handles, adjusting the nodes, just until you get happy with the overall shape. Uh, that you've got there. Put on this one here, then I might just want to bring that over, bring this down, put on that handle. Okay, so I think we're almost there. Might bring this down a bit. So I think I'm happy with that. So if we want we could just click into the white space just to take a look at the vector uh, without the nodes uh, in view. And then we could go back in if we wanted to and just make some more adjustments. Okay, so I think I'm happy uh, with the way that that vector looks now. And so normally you would probably have an image that you're sketching over in order for you to reference to to create a good shape. Okay, so now we've 
finally satisfied with that, uh, we'll just go back into normal selection mode. And what I'd like to do is create a copy of this exactly two and a half inches um, up. So I'm going to select our vector that we've got here. I'm just going to come over and copy that. And then with that still selected, I'm just going to go and move selected objects. We want to move that relative to its current position exactly 2.5 inches in Y. Now if we press apply, you can see that's moved that up by 2.5 inches. I can close that and then now I can paste in my original. And so to give us an idea of how the banner is going to look, we're just going to input some lines. So I'm going to go back into the draw a polyline tool. I'm just going to roughly sketch in from here and join that up to here. I'm just going to press this space bar on the keyboard just to temporarily come out of that. And then we're going to come back in, in here, space bar, and then click, click, space, and then we'll just join these up and a space to enter that in. So let's just close that form. And so now uh, we can clearly see a shape where of how the banner is going to look. So it's going to come round and it's going to come underneath here and flip back up and then it's going to come underneath and it's going to curve up and then curve completely over the top here. So you can see where it's going to fold under and over. And now we can use this as a guide to change the shape of our banner if we wanted to and maybe give it a little bit more perspective to make it look like it's tapering off into the background. So I'm going to select this vector here. I'm going to go back into the node edit mode. I'm just going to hover over and select both of those in order for me to just move them together. And I might just want to move just the one on its own. And I'm going to select these ones here. Also bring those in a little and then individually alter them if I wanted to. And so again, it's just tweaking uh, the handles and the actual nodes themselves until you're happy uh, with the overall shape. Okay, so let's have a look at that. And then what we do then is just join them back up just so we can roughly see how that would look. And again, I'm not too uh, sure of the shape here, so I just want to maybe round that off a little bit more. And we could just zoom in if we wanted. Maybe shorten this handle here. And bring that one out. Okay, so let's have a look at that zoom to fit. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I like the way that's tapering. Uh, off there. And now I can look at just deleting these joining vectors because I don't need those anymore. So if that's selected I'm just going to press delete on the keyboard and delete again, select it, delete it, select it and then delete it again. So what we need to do now is we need to look at cutting up our vectors and then joining them with the uh, vector that's on the bottom to create closed regions that we're going to use uh, ultimately to crop our components back to after we've modelled uh, the overall part using the two rail sweep. So with this vector selected, let's go into node edit mode. And what we're going to do is we're going to uh, cut each bit at the apex of the cut. So I'm just going to, using the my mouse, I'm just going to zoom in slightly and then sort of estimate the apex and then I'm going to right mouse click and I can cut the vector or I can press C on the keyboard, that's the shortcut key to do that. Okay, you can see that that's cut that there. And I'm going to come in over here and then again I'm going to press C on the keyboard to cut there and hover over here and press C there. I'm going to do the same for the bottom, so again, let's estimate that the apex there, so I think that's there, so I'm going to press C, come over this side and press C here, and then over here, we'll see there. So let's just zoom to fit, and then we can see now we have um, separate vectors there, which we're now going to look at joining them up. So if we go back into normal selection mode, and with this vector selected, I'm going to hold down shift and select this one also. 
I want to join them up. So we want to join them up using straight lines. So if we come over to Edit Objects, we're going to use this option to join or close vectors with a straight line. Okay, you can see we've put that one in, and then we're going to click again to put it in at the end there. We can see now we have one region or one fold. Okay, so I'm going to select this vector here, shift and select this one. We're going to do the same again. So join with a straight line. Okay, now that isn't really what I'm looking for. What it's done there, it's joined uh, joined them up at the closest points. Now this is where I'd like my join to be, so I'm just going to go and undo that. So if you go to edit and say undo join vectors, and what we'd have to do now is sort of manually uh, input a vector where we want that. So I'm going to draw a line, I'm just going to hover over and try and snap to the point there then hover over and then snap in position. I'm just going to right mouse click to come out of there with that vector selected. I'm going to hold down shift, select the top one here and holding down shift still, I'm going to select the bottom one. And this time we're going to use the option to join open vectors. Okay, So it's telling me at this tolerance we'll be left with one open vector, so we're going to say join. And I'm going to close that and we can see now that's joined. So then I can go in there and then join the last part up with a straight line. And so we'd continue, so I'd select this vector here, shift and select this one. Again, join with a straight line and join with a straight line again. And I'll select this one, shift and select this vector, join with a straight line. Okay, again it's gone for the closest point, which isn't what we're looking for. We want to join this line up uh, to this point here. So again, let's go and edit, undo join vectors. We'll go and manually draw in our line ourselves. So we'll draw a polyline. It's going to snap to the end point there. Snap there. Right mouse click to come out of that. Hold down shift to select all three of those. And then we're going to go and join open vectors. Okay, again, so at that tolerance, we're left with one open vector. Let's say join, close that, select that and then let's go and join with a straight line. So now we can see we have four separate closed shapes that we'll ultimately use to crop components to at a later stage. Now there's just one final edit that I'd like to make to this section of our banner here. I just want to alter the shape of that. So if that's selected, let's go into node edit mode and you can see if I just zoom in slightly uh, we can see the center point of the vector. And what I can do is just select it, pull that in, and it's going to insert a node and move it wherever I've positioned that. I'm going to hover over this span here. I'm just going to say Bezier. I'd like to give it more of a um, ribbony flag shape at the end. I'm just going to pull this node out here, and then maybe pull this one out here. Hover over this span here and again say Bezier or I could press B on the keyboard. Again we'll just bring that one out a little. Could move that down if I wanted. Okay, so it's just altering those until we're happy uh, with the overall look of that vector. And then we just come out of there just to take a look at that without all of those nodes um, in view. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that. I just might want to bring that down just a little bit more. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Uh, let's say uh, zoom to fit and then we'll just go back into normal selection mode. So the vectors that we've created are essentially the top view of the banner. What we need to do now is create some vectors that will form the cross sections for our two rail sweep, which is like looking at the side view of the part. Now I like to draw my cross sections based on a rectangle. So let's come over to the create vectors section. We're going to use the option to draw a rectangle. I'm just going to snap into the center there. You can see that it's telling me x0, y0. I'm just going to drag out my rectangle roughly to the same length as our first fold, this one here. And then I'm going to come in to the uh, rectangle form and enter a height value of exactly half an inch, press apply and close. So I just need to move this out of the way. So with that selected, I'm going to select that again to put that into transform mode. I'm going to hold down shift 
I'm just going to bring that down. Hold down shift allows me to keep that in line whether I'm uh, moving that up or down or to the left and to the right. Okay, so I'm just going to bring that down there. Now when we're creating cross sections our vectors must be open so what I need to do is go in there node edit that to open up that vector. So we're going to node edit mode I'm going to hover over this span here right mouse click I'm going to delete that. I'm just going to zoom in slightly so I can see that a little bit better. I'm going to hover over this node here I'm just going to snap that to the midpoint there and then I'd like to right mouse click and bezier this span here so we can play with the curvature of this area. Now like we did for our vector here where we created um, the outline of our shape uh, remember we made sure that we aligned the control handle with its main node point. We need to do the same here so that when we create that mirrored copy it's going to have a smooth transition through that center there. So I'm going to select this node here, holding down shift I'm going to select the handle I'm going to press Y so that they're aligned in Y. I'm going to select this control handle and I'm just going to bring that up just to give that a bit of curvature to that vector. And now we can go and create our next cross section. So we're just going to go back into normal selection mode and with that selected what I'm going to do is select it again to put it into transform mode and I'm going to hold down control in order for me to create a copy. I'm just going to select this uh, handle here and I'm just going to shrink that back roughly to the same width as this fold here. Okay, so you can see that there. Again we need to come in and node edit that so let's go into node edit mode and look at changing the shape of that vector. So if we just zoom in slightly I'm just going to select this handle here and bring that down so bring that curve curvature coming down here and what I need to do is bring this node down as it's currently sat above the previous cross section and we don't want that to come through so we must make sure that that's sat underneath. So if that's selected I'm just going to use the arrow down key on my keyboard just to nudge that down. Let me do that again and I'm just going to select just the handle alone just to create more curvature within that span. Okay, again we'll just bring that bit down and I'll just select the handle just to bring that up. Okay, at this point I could come back to my first cross section and maybe look at giving that a bit more curvature in there. Okay, and then we're ready to create the cross section for this fold here. So like we did previously I'm going to select this vector here, select that again to put it into transform mode, holding down control in order for us to create a copy I'm just going to stretch that out to the width, roughly the same width as that fold. Okay, so you can see that there. Zoom in again, go back into node edit mode to transform the shape of that cross section. I'm going to select this handle here, bring that down. So we've got a nice wave coming through there. I'm going to make sure that we have it that our span doesn't come below this vector here, the end of this. Uh, vector of our first cross section here as we want to make sure that we have some thickness in our material there so we'll keep that roughly around there I'm just going to bring this around over here so I'm happy with that then we'll create our last cross section which is for this fold here so again let's go back into normal selection mode with that selected holding down control in order for us to create the copy just going to shrink that down roughly to the width of our last fold there. We'll go back into node edit mode, zoom in and then I'm just going to adjust my handles until I'm happy with the shape of our cross section. I'm just going to select that node and just nudge down slightly and maybe select just the handles, give that a bit more curvature in there we'll come back into normal selection mode and then we'll just zoom to fit to take a look at that as a whole and we can see we've got nice curvature coming in from the main fold it's coming down it's going to come back up uh, for this fold here that's going to sort of sit underneath but then come over at the top here which is represented by this curvature there and then this fold here is going to come in come underneath there 
and then it's going to sort of come back up to the top so we're going to have more thickness at the top there ready for the fold that's going to come over the top that's going to sit over here Okay, now looking at that fold, uh, what I would like to do is just maybe go back into node edit mode and just bring that down just a little and maybe bring that curvature up a little by pulling on that handle there. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So let's just click in the white space and then right mouse click to come out of the node edit mode. Okay, so if we just um, zoom to fit there. So the next set of vectors that we need to create will become the rails for our two rail sweep. So what we need to do is make sure that there are two per fold. So we're going to come in, we're going to create a rail that's going to come in at the ends of each of our regions that we've got for our banner. So to do that we're going to use the draw a polyline tool. So let's go and draw the line. I'm going to make x 0 0.01, y is going to be negative 2. I'm going to add that point, okay, so you can see that there. And I'm just going to roughly position my end point, click up here. So I want to make sure that it's higher than the height of this vector here. We can close that. And if we just select it, zoom in, you can see it's just a fraction to the right of our cropping component. And that's just so that when we create our two rail sweep, uh, those two rails are going to be clearing. Um, the overall shape that we'd like to crop that to. So we've got our first vector in there that's going to represent our first rail. Now I need to draw in some more rails so we're going to go back into the draw a polyline option. Okay, And then I'm just going to zoom in over here, roughly sketch in my line over here. Okay, so remember just going to make sure that we keep the length of our rails longer than the overall uh, cropping vector. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm just going to space to put that in and then if I right mouse click to come out of the polyline tool I can just look at altering that. So I'm just going to um, move that over just using the arrow key okay, and then I can just look at rotating that slightly. So again making sure that we're coming past the fold like so. So I'm happy with that. So we've got our rails for our first fold and we also have our rail for our second fold as we're going to share the rails. So I just need to put in uh, one more rail to come in at the end here. So we'll go back into the draw a polyline option. Again, let's just roughly sketch in place. Okay, happy with that. The space to enter that in. Come in and draw in our next polyline. There we go. Space to enter that and then we'll come in and draw this one here. And then if I wanted to I could go into node edit by going into the node edit mode and just moving one of those if I wanted. So I could come in again. So Okay, so I'm happy with all of those. And so that completes this tutorial where we've looked at effective ways that we can create vectors to form the cropping regions, the cross sections and the drive rails in order for us to take this further and model the banner using the two rail sweep modeling function. And so let's go ahead and save this. So we'll go to file, save as, we'll call that banner vector save that and then you can access that from the project folder.